Hey guys, welcome to your next tutorial. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to make arrays with pointers, so heap allocated arrays using new, and I'm going to show you how to use a destructor. Now I'm pretty sure I've actually already told you about heap allocated arrays when I first went over pointers, uh, but let's just go over it a little more and let's, let's go over how to pass arrays to different functions and things like that. So the advantage of making a array with a pointer is that it doesn't have to have a constant size. So normally, like for instance, if we want to make an array of a thousand elements, we have to know that we want it to be a thousand elements before we start. But we can't do something like int input cn input like that. And we can't use input, Visual Studio is auto formatting for me. We can't use input in here because this isn't a constant expression. We don't know what it is when we run the program. However, with a pointer, we can make it at runtime and it's not going to give us an issue. This is called a dynamic array and this is actually what vectors do on the inside. So this is what your, your vector class is basically doing. You could actually write your own vector class using uh, pointers. So int star my array and then we're going to set it equal to new int and then in brackets we can put the input here. Because it's a dynamic array, because it's allocated at runtime, it's not a stack variable. The pointer is a stack variable, but this new int array is allocated on the heap. So even after main exits, this uh, pointer will go away, but this will not go away until our program ends. So we have to remember to call delete on the array, but anytime you call delete on an array, so any anytime you call new and then you have brackets after your type, anytime you do that, you need to call delete brackets like that my array. Uh, that just that basically tells uh, your compiler that you're deleting an array. And the reason it doesn't know if you're deleting an array or not is because look at this int star right here. This looks exactly the same as this int star my variable equals new int like that. So these the type looks exactly the same. So your compiler doesn't know if you're trying to delete an array or a normal variable, a non-array variable. So you have to tell it with those brackets. Now, if we want to pass the array to another function, we can do that. So we'll see in how many numbers, and then we'll set all of them to one. So for int i equals zero, i is less than input i plus plus. So input is the size. Let's actually rename it to size like that. So it makes more sense i is less than size, i plus plus, my array, and even though this is a pointer, pointers are actually the same thing as an array pretty much. You can actually call it like this, my array i. Now what's cool about this is it, an integer uh, pointer has the memory address, and because you can give it this offset into the memory address, it knows the location of the variable you're asking for in memory. Now remember, the first element of this uh, int array is going to be at the address stored in my array. The second element is going to be at the address stored in my array plus four because there's four bytes in an int. The third element is going to be the address of my array plus eight, right? So it's really simple for the compiler to figure out. Uh, so what it's going to do is whenever you loop through a pointer, it's just going to each time you increment i, it's going to increase by however many bytes your uh, array type is. So since this is an integer array, each time i increases, it's going to go to the next 4-byte integer because it knows that. Now the consequences of this are if we make an uh, integer pointer uh, my int equals new int, we could we could do the same thing. We could try to dereference my int like it's an array, and this is going to work. So this is basically how memory reading programs can actually read memory. Like if you've ever had cheat, if you've ever used like Cheat Engine to hack a game, it probably does something similar to to this, where it uses pointers to basically go through your memory and figure out uh, parts of the, the the program memory that it's not normally allowed to access just using pointers. So each time we call I plus plus, we're going to keep stepping through memory. So if we set star my int equal to three, like that, and then we set, uh, oh, that, that's it. Let's just, let's just see out and see what happens. It's probably going to crash, but maybe we'll get a three, maybe a one three, and then maybe a bunch of random crap. So let's go ahead and run it. And we got... Oh, I have to see in the size, so I'm going to see in 10. There we go, look, it printed out 10 variables. 
So if we zoom in, first it printed out a 3, because that 10 is what I inputted. So it printed out a 3, right? It got the value of my int correctly, but then it printed out a whole bunch of garbage. Now all these numbers here that you see, this is what's in memory. So we didn't get an error. We were able to access that memory and print it out, but it doesn't make sense because we're not actually using this memory. Uh, that also shows uh, that you know, you're know you not always gonna get an error if you do something wrong with your pointers. So if you try to loop through this, uh, you may not get an error and your program might just randomly crash later at some point. So just you know, access an array is an array. Don't access an int like that unless you're trying to screw around with memory. Now, I created a zombie class because I wanted to show you about uh, destructors. So let's go to zombie. And zombie is pretty much empty. He just has a private int uh, star items. So an integer pointer to items. And he has a constructor. So if we go in here to the constructor, let's initialize items to a new int 100 or something. So items is an array of 100 integers where each integer represents an item or something. Now you'll remember in our previous uh, challenge, or not challenge, in the episode where we made uh, the little uh, dialog tree program, we made like a destroy data function or something and it called delete for us. But the problem with that is we have to remember uh, to call that function or we're going to have a memory leak. The solution is to use something called a destructor and a destructor is kind of like a constructor. The constructor runs whenever you create an object like with new. The destructor runs whenever you delete an object like with delete or if uh, the object is popped off the stack because it's a stack variable or when your program ends. Basically any time a variable's memory gets freed it calls the destructor. So to do the destructor it's the same thing as the constructor except with a tilde in front which is a little squiggly. So we say tilde zombie and you will remember I deleted this from our automatic visual studio class uh, thing a whole bunch of times. Now we're actually going to be able to use it. So now in the C++ file, we have to say zombie colon colon tilde zombie. And this is going to get called whenever a zombie quits. So let's go ahead and see out destructor called like that. So we'll know the destructor got called and then we'll delete our items. Delete items like that. And we need iostream include iostream and using namespace std. There we go. Okay, so that should call the destructor. Now let's make a new zombie. So we'll say zombie star my zombie equals new zombie. So when we do this, it's going to call the constructor. Okay, so it's going to create 100 integers. And then what we want to do is say we want to delete the zombie later. All we have to do is call delete my zombie like that and then whenever we run it so I'll get rid of that whenever we run it we're going to get uh, the correct print statement if we don't have errors already has a body I didn't do the tilde there we go tilde for destructor all right we run it there we go it says destructor called and since we're cnning right here we know the destructor got called right here now if my zombie wasn't a pointer it was just a um, stack variable like this then the destructor is going to get called when main ends uh, so we won't be able to see it print out because um, our function uh, our, our program will end uh, but you can kind of take my word for it if this was inside another function uh, you would see it print the destructor there so one last thing, uh, let's make an integer pointer, uh, my array equals new int 100. So here's an array of 100 integers. What if we want to pass this to a function? So we'll make a function void my function. Getting lazy with the names. So we're going to pass in an array. Now we don't say int my array 100. Because we don't know if the size of the array is going to be 100 whenever it's a dynamic array. What we do is we can either pass it in like this. We can say int my array with nothing. And then a size. So int size. So we know how big it is. Or we can pass it in like a pointer. Because remember pointers and arrays are like the exact same thing. So we can do it either way. I'm going to do it like a pointer. So now if we wanted to loop through and print out 
uh, everything in my array. So let's initialize it for int i equals zero. i is less than 100. i plus plus. We'll say my array i equals i. So we're going to count to 99. Now what I want my function to do is print that out. So I'm just going to copy this. And we can just say c out my array i. Now, instead of looping to 100, because we don't know if it's going to be 100 in this program, we do. But what if we ask the user for input? So int size, cn size. So he's going to input the size. So we don't know if this is going to be 100 right here. That's why we want to pass it in as a variable up here. Because if we don't pass it in, we're not going to know. We can't put size here because size is a variable in int main. We have to pass in a parameter uh, that tells us the size. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, we're going to call my function, which prints the array. So I probably could have called it print array. And we'll pass in my array, which is a pointer, which is, again, like the same thing as an array. And we'll pass in this size variable right here. And now we should create an array of numbers and print it all out. So let's go ahead and run that. All right, so I'm going to do 600. And it counted to... 100? It didn't look like it counted to 600. Ah, because I said go to 100. I had a bug. And let's do an indel. Like that. Now to prove that it works, we're going to run again. 600. And there you go. It counts to 599. So that's how you pass arrays. Remember, this is uh, by reference. Arrays are by reference. Pointers are always by reference, meaning if you change the value of my array, so if you say like my array i equals 5, that's going to change it. And by the way, notice I didn't have to say star my array 5 because it's a pointer. Whenever you use the square brackets, that does a dereference for you. It knows, it knows you're dereferencing. That's kind of what that means. So this is like saying... Uh, star my array uh, plus however many bytes the i is equals 5. But that probably confused you. Anyways, I hope this was kind of enlightening on how you can allocate arrays and pass them around and how arrays and integers are basically the exact same thing, except with an integer pointer, you can make an array of a dynamic size. These are called dynamic arrays, whereas normally with a normal stack array, it has to be a constant uh, size like this. 500 or something like that, uh, which is kind of a limitation. But sometimes you know the size. If you know the size, this is much safer because remember, you have to remember to uh, enter a delete call somewhere. So we didn't delete this. We already have a memory leak. If our program ends, the memory will get freed anyway, but it's always good practice to delete your memory. So we're going to call delete my array just to be sure. And you also learn about destructors, which are just the opposite of a, of a constructor. Basically, it just gets called whenever uh, your object is destroyed. Thanks for watching, guys.